politics in conflict breaking news what's going on elizabeth what's going on is a very interesting play uh that that germany is making right now and that is that they plan to shut down all of their nuclear power plants and this is coming at a very odd time especially because they're shutting down three as we're going into winter with an already very substantial energy crisis that's going on. Well, indeed, that is very odd coming at this time, uh, usually for a government to embark on a policy like this in the middle of winter. You know, as one who've been in Germany on many, many occasions in a different time of the year, I even have family who lives in Germany. Uh, this time of the year is very cold. So uh, that is very odd for them to come up with this uh, uh, policy uh, by shutting down all uh, the, the nukes uh, plants by 2022. So to me personally, and this is my personal opinion, suggests that the government, the German government that is, is not telling the Germans what's going on. Something is going on behind the scenes. Yes. I yeah. absolutely agree. With yeah, they give it that blanket of the green energy or the environment and all mm -hmm. that. But this is far more than just uh, uh, a renewable energy and so forth. So that is what I'm guessing. And if I have to truly, and again, this is my opinion, and that's why we wanted to share mm -hmm. it with our viewers just to present this and they can decide for themselves. If I am to think, I'll say, I'll say just to share opinion is is uh, uh the german government finds some issues safety issues with the plants that in their judgment if not shut down could lead to what happened in japan with the uh, fukushima daiichi uh, uh nuclear power plants and we mm -hmm. all know the disaster that happened there is a possible possibility of something like this that's why they went ahead and shut and and uh, announced that they're going to be shutting down uh, all this by 2022. I think that is absolutely a possibility. And I think. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, the dogs agree right. with you. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yes. Dogs yeah. decided they wanted to bark a lot right now. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's a very real possibility. And I also wonder, because this is this is uh, something that we're seeing all over the world, right? Yeah. That we're, we're seeing all of these very odd plays with energy. And it's under the guise of being green, right? It's under the guise of like, oh, we're shutting down you know, these oil pipelines, like we had a very, you know, we, we still have a very big problem mm -hmm. in the United States right now, because, you know, we are in an oil crunch. And instead of sort of producing it ourselves here, and, and Biden came in and shut down one of the major pipelines when he came into office. And now he's going and begging other countries to help. Well, okay, so that's a in the name of green, it's not that less oil is being produced. And so if they're looking at this and saying, oh, well, it's for green purposes. The problem with that argument, and which is why I think you're absolutely correct, David, that something else yeah. is going on. The problem with that argument is that now people are going to be using more natural gas versus nuclear. Yeah. And, you know, we saw last year uh, or this year, that the energy consumption that was happening from wind and solar, even though there was more demand for it, and even though there was more infrastructure put in place for mm -hmm. solar and wind, because of the weather, it, it didn't produce enough energy. And these power plants, these nuclear power plants, are what saved people from blackouts. Yeah. And yeah. so... It seems, and we talk about this a decent amount, that it seems like something else has to be going on here on a bigger scale. And this is what I want to put to you guys, the viewers. And, and we would love to hear your comments uh, in the comment section or on our Twitters. 
uh, because something else is going on here and on a global level, right. because it's not just it, it's not just the U.S. that's facing this. It's also Europe. And it seems to be a Western world problem. David, I I'm interested in your way in on that, too, where yeah. there's a there's a there's a global going away from what's seen as bad but only to turn around and kind of do the same thing just via a different route. Yeah. Well, maybe that explains what that term reset is all about. Maybe mm. <laughs> that's possibly, yeah. but in the case of Germany, this one, literally uh, it's a complete, uh, complete ca remarkable about face uh, mm -hmm. regarding what chancellor uh, Angela Merkel, uh, the right uh, center, right government, which only here's the funny thing about all this. Only last year has pushed through a plan to extend the lifespan of uh, uh, the the whole country, Germany's 17th uh, reactors, uh, with the last one scheduled to go offline in 2036. Mm -hmm. So this decision, that's why they kind of like pivot it, about face, turn a different direction. And that's what led me personally to believe uh, mm -hmm. there is some major safety issue that if this is not scheduled a certain time or decision or whatever that might be could lead to some major disaster uh, for mm -hmm. germany and given germany is at the heart of europe yes. uh, that just to me that's what led me to believe that now now the challenge that germany is gonna face it has to do with the closure of those reactors because it's very costly yes it is very it, costly. It's gonna cost them arms and legs to do this. And given where the global economy is going, uh, interesting enough is that even Italy, among the group of eight, Italy has also abandoned nuclear power. That is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And yeah. and and I wonder if it's in the same design. I wonder if it's the same people who built them. I wonder if it's that same infrastructure. Yeah. Now that one, I do not know. Uh, I don't either. Thing, yeah. The only thing I know is that when Italy made that decision, it was really uh, after mm -hmm. what we they witnessed uh, with the 1986 the Chernobyl disaster. Yes. That's to them was like, that's what happened. But Angela Merkel's argument is that the Germans have never been in favor of nuclear, especially after the uh, uh, what happened in Japan. And mm -hmm. it kind of like the radiation moving in certain directions or whatever. But it's very odd uh, to go about a plan like this in the middle of winter, even though you are going to do it later on. Why don't you wait till summer and announce that one, not in the middle of winter? And I think that may be sort of the biggest, uh, the biggest indicator that something else is going on. Because if you're looking at the situation as a whole, you know, yeah. why are there not policies put in place to make sure that people have enough electricity to get them through the winter before you start to take the electricity yeah. away, or the power away? Yeah, why, that, why are those not put in place first? And that's what I think we're seeing globally as we pull away from nuclear, as we pull away from oil and gas, you know, we have proof. I mean, we saw it. We saw that renewables, unfortunately, because I would love for renewables to, to work. I would love for them to be what we use all the time, but they aren't there yet. They aren't able to take on the yeah. surplus that's needed at, at this time. So why is there no conversation about that? Why are we seeing, you know, sanctions on Nord Stream 2, for example, which I would love to talk about? Why are we seeing that before we see renewables being really heavily invested in and pushed mm -hmm. towards and having them come up to the standard that they need to? Well, the, for the renewables, is the investment in it required billions of, 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 of dollars to do mm -hmm. that. So that's not something. We're not talking about a billion or two. We're talking about serious money. So right. governments will have to think, given the global economy crunch, they're going to have to think in terms of well, how we're going to go about it. So that will be one of the uh, uh, aspects of the equation that mm -hmm. they have to think through before they embark on whatever decisions they want to go about it. Now. Well 
I do have one idea that is really outside the box completely. I love it. Yes. So this one has to do with hypothetical scenarios just in case there is a conflict between NATO and Russia. Mm -hmm. Well, because Russia did mention one time they will be willing to move the nuclear missiles on the doorsteps of Europe. Mm -hmm. And we all know what it means. Well, guess what? If you do have nuclear power plants and they are targeted you will know what it means you know mm -hmm. uh, this is a just a wild wild uh, uh, idea that crossed my mind i, I know it's not going to happen uh, because there will be no war between nato and russia because there will be the end of yeah. europe uh, but it just <laughs> it to think, yeah it just to think about it in those terms usually a nuclear power plant if it attacked well mm -hmm. that's the, the release of radiation all over so absolutely yeah but but this is not a, i i think there is something else the german government is just not willing to disclose yet so because what i found also interesting is that uh, uh, germany's neighbors uh, switzerland mm -hmm. you know where the nuclear power produces about 40 percent of the electricity yeah. Has, an, has announced last week that it plans to shut down uh, its reactors gradually, one step at a time, uh -huh. for the lifespan of about 50 years, which means they will be done by 2034. And, and what, why? Yeah, that I don't have an answer to. They're being I, shut down and they're being shut down very, very quickly. Quickly, yeah. And usually, all of a sudden. Yeah, usually it it's a procedure it's a mm -hmm. process this is not a a, yeah. a year or two or three proceed a process we're talking about a decade plus right and and it needs to be done safely it needs to be done well it needs to be done with a greater plan and you know we see these things happening lightning speed you know afghanistan is i, I know that it has nothing to do with energy but it does have to do with doing something very quickly and not very well yeah well actually afghanistan uh, believe it or not uh, when it comes down to energy it has a lot under its ground that is true actually mm -hmm. there is a book and i have it right here on my uh, my bookshelf here on my uh, library a book that wasn't published here in the u.s you know it's called uh, the hidden truth mm. you know if you i don't even know i have it here somewhere hold on a second <laughs> well david goes to get that uh i want right. oh there it is right here yes. so this one's called it's called the forbidden truth uh, uh u.s secret oil diplomacy and the failed mm. hunt for ubia so this one has to do basically the gist of it is way back in the late 70s early 80s uh, the u.s was hoping to get an oil pipeline that goes from Afghanistan through Kazakhstan into the Persian Gulf, into whatever it needs to go. But mm -hmm. Afghan said, no, they won't do it. They won't allow it themselves. <laughs> so that's why Af Afghan has a lot, a lot, a lot of wealth, mineral wealth under its ground. Yeah. So that is one of the, for Afghanistan, it has a lot. So I just well, wanted to make a comment on that. Yeah. And thank you. And who is that by again? Uh, this one is actually the author is not an American. He's a French. It's mm. called uh, 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 Jean Charles Dissart and Guillaume Dasquier. Th those are French authors. They are yeah. from here because the book I got it. I think in your, I got it in Paris when I went to Paris uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, but it's just to go back to this German mm -hmm. thing. It's very odd and weird that now you get neighboring country Switzerland announcing this also uh, it just start to yeah. sort of makes me wonder is europe concerned about you know what russia might do maybe mm -hmm. maybe not uh, but it shouldn't be because if it were the case then why the us uh, the uh, secretary of state tony blanken will push for the idea of sanctions against north stream too it doesn't yeah. make any sense because germany gets its gas from russia but well, and, and they're pushing for that right now yeah but there is a hidden thing that most uh, most Americans mm -hmm. do not know is that the whole idea of the sanctions of the Nord Stream 2 was fueled by U.S. energy companies so they can U.S. can sell gas to Europe. Yes, of, of course it was. Yeah, it's all about the you market. Know, of course it was. I, I think the smartest thing 
that you can do if you want to find what the truth of any situation is, is follow mm -hmm. the money. Follow exactly. the money. Who exactly. benefits by this happening? Exactly. And how do they benefit? Because, you know, I think right now there it's, it's a time when most people know that that politicians, the mainstream media are not being honest with them. I think that that's that's something that's known by more people all the time. Yeah. And so it really is the thing of, you know, if you're seeing all these closures of these nuclear power plants all over Europe, you got to ask why. Why is that's that true. happening? Because okay. the the answer that they're giving, the green agenda, isn't the answer, right? No, that, that's just a cover. That's just a cover. Because usually you have to give the masses something uh, that they can buy into. Uh, right. Green energy will be one of the things they'll buy into, per se. Knowing that the cost... Remember when we had the interview with Art Berman? Yes, and, and he met, one one of the questions I remember asking him about. Okay, there is this argument about renewable energies and all mm -hmm. that, and he did say that yes, it could work, but you need to understand the investment, the cost associated yeah. with that, and the length. For how long will it take for that to be mm -hmm. working properly? This is not an overnight procedure, and a lot of masses, average Joe, average Jane, might not understand those dynamics. So. Right. And, and it might be so easy to say, well, why don't we just switch immediately? Mm. But, you know, the thing that that you're touching on right now is that unfortunately and, and like I said, I would I want renewable resources. I want the planet to be healthy and yeah. I want us to be a good thing for the world. But the reality is that we are not at a place where we can take our dependence away and without having something else that will pick it up on the other end. Exactly. And yeah. it brings, you know, there's a lot of talk of, of people suffering right now as we go into winter of people freezing to death, which that seems like a, like an unacceptable. No, it's not. Yeah. People. Yeah. For us to be thinking in terms of, you know, it's, it's sad to know mm -hmm. another fellow human being uh, is dying out of freeze you know that's that just said just before i forget uh while i'm thinking about it uh you thought when you mentioned about some new renewable one well there is mm -hmm. one but that is not easy to get to yet and there's the process for it it has to do with helium three yes yeah. yeah this is why you're seeing for example china is moving forward into the moon and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to move into that direction and rightly so, if they want to compete mm -hmm. for that and, and Russia is going to join them, maybe the U.S. will also. But because helium-3, you know, the energy from helium-3 will resolve some of those issues. But once again, the process of it, it's not going to be done overnight. No, it's And the not. cost, and the cost associated with it. So, uh, but, but it's very odd for Germany to be sort of uh, beha right. not behaving, but embarking on such a hasty policy like this unless there is something of urgency that they are not disclosing I that, that's my belief that's my belief I, uh, absolutely I used to work in washington so i kind of understand a little bit how governments usually go about mm -hmm. when they announce something uh, there will be always a different motives for why you mentioned this or that so, well and and like i said you got to follow the money Exactly. Follow the money and follow the patterns of what's happening. You're right. Something is going on. There's some there's some reason that is undisclosed that this is happening. Exactly. And we're going to follow up on this. And probably we'll do another update on it a few mm -hmm. weeks from now once we get to that one. So, well, and uh, I, I want to point out the energy situation in general. You know, I was um, I was reading an article from the China Morning Post. Yeah. Uh, and. You know, we read articles from all over the world. So it's this, you know, I, well, I we read articles from all over the world. Just to share with you and our viewers, I write for South China Morning Post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I write some articles there. So yeah, go ahead. And I want to say we're not saying China is perfect. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Uh, I want to, and and that's actually something we're going to be addressing in a in in future episodes. Is you know there are some there are some issues that we're really diving deep into that we're going to bring some experts in on specifically in terms of, you know, China doing business 
and we want both sides of that argument. Of the argument. Um, but I bring that up because uh, it, it talks about Biden bringing chaos. And that's really what it feels like is going on right now is that there is so much chaos. It's it's like it's like all of these policies say one thing and then they shut down you know, these pipelines, but then we go beg for oil because there isn't enough. And then we shut down or Germany shuts down the nuclear plants that literally prevented them from having blackouts. Yeah, so, exactly. so it seems kind of chaotic and, and that there's just, there's so little sense, but I think that there is, I, I personally think that there are other forces sort of at work here that are, that are sort of creating these situations so just something to something to dive into, to I think. think. About. That's and, true. And always look for the truth behind the truth. Exactly. Well, before we leave, because I have to go, I have to teach. Uh, oh, we want to say thank you yeah. to uh, mm -hmm. Seeker. Yeah. Seekers. Yeah. Thank you, Seekers, for the super sticker. We truly appreciate that one. So I have to teach because I have a class uh, in about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, actually. But before I leave, I want to let our viewers know uh, that we're going to have tomorrow uh, Q&A. Yeah. We're going to devote the entire hour for Q&A at 1100 hours. So mm -hmm. uh, it's because we feel Friday, not enough time to answer all the questions. So we decided from now on, we're going to have one session a week where we're going to answer questions for our viewers, whomever, whoever comes on. And, and, and we'll be happy to answer that for the entire hour. So, yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's at 11 a.m. Central Time. It'll be up here on the channel uh, in maybe about an hour. So you guys will be able to see it. Perfect. And also, we want to let you know, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Mm -hmm. And also for our members, uh, we look forward to doing the next presentation on December 3rd, I believe, about the... This Friday. This Friday. So mm -hmm. that's for our members only. That's going to be about the inevitable death of the U.S. dollar, uh, which will be an interesting topic given what's going on in the global uh, uh, landscape. But also, uh, we want you to check out our membership, see what we offer into that by going to geopoliticsinconflict.com. And of course, do not forget to follow us on Twitter. Instagram, yes. Instagram and TikTok. On Twitter, I'm at uh, D. Walalu, and Elizabeth is on uh, at Alchemy, uh, Alchemy of E. Yes. So uh, just make sure you follow us on that. Sometimes we post, it's not sometimes, we do post a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah. there. So that's how we interact with, with you guys. And uh, so anything to add, Elizabeth, before we leave? That's uh, it. So we look forward to tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So make sure uh, Elizabeth is going to post uh, the announcement about it so you see it. But we'll be there tomorrow at 1100 hours to answer your questions. So, and as always, stay informed.